Hello, good evening. I'm Sarah Lam and I'm the founder of Girl Geek Dinners. I'm delighted to invite everyone online and offline to celebrate with the Girl Geek Dinners this year. Um, we have been going for 10 years, um, as of the 16th of August 2005, and it's now 2015. So clearly things have moved on somewhat since then. Um, so I thought I would run through a few things, um, mainly a little bit of looking back, um, a few observations that we found along, our, along the way, and really a big thank you as well to all of the organisers around the world that have really made Girl Geek Dinners take off over the last 10 years. So, how did Girl Geek Dinners start? Um, back in August 2015, uh, 2005, not 2015, um, we set up um, an event at the Texas Embassy in London. Um, I had some help from some friends, um, male friends actually, not female, um, who really did help me out trying to find a way of encouraging more women to support one another in the IT sector. Now, the reason I decided I wanted to do this was purely because I felt isolated in the industry, um, so in some ways it was selfish, but at the same time it was a selfless act because there were so many other women feeling exactly the same way. So I set about trying to find a way of encouraging other women to meet up with me in London um, over dinner and just talking about tech and anything geeky and interesting that they enjoyed. The first event was um, quite small. It had about 35 people at it. We didn't have sponsors then. It was very simple. You paid for your own food and drinks. You turned up, you signed up on a wiki. Do you remember wikis? Oh my goodness. That does feel like a long way, a long time ago now because most people don't use them anymore. Um, and it was a lovely event. And looking back at it, I wouldn't change it for the world. Then came the second event, and thanks to Microsoft, they sponsored our second event and our third um, in London at the same venue. So people didn't have to pay for their own food and drinks, Microsoft covered it, uh, which was a lovely surprise. And from there on, that's where we got our sponsorship um, kind of history. Um, where do we go from there? Let's think. So that, that was the first three events, so that takes us around to uh, 2006 then, because that was, that was through to December. Um, in 2006, we started getting inquiries about maybe doing events in other, other cities and towns in the UK. Uh, Brighton was the first with Rosie Sherry. She was brilliant. She managed to get the Brighton Girl Geek Dinners up and running. Um, I even went down from Basingstoke to go and visit her, because that's where I lived. And, was working and she was all the way down in Brighton and she'd made the trek all the way up to London a few times to come and come and see our events and even speak at one. So we then had her events there. Um, from there we had um, an inquiry from Italy, from Milan, from Sara Mattinini, who has become a very good friend of mine since. Um, so they went from the UK to Milan to Italy. It was uh, surreal going to an event there. Uh, you you learnt a lot about the way that different cultures embraced the idea of sitting down to dinner and actually speaking about technology. For example, in the UK we did finger food buffets. It was more about talking to each other and mixing and mingling. In Italy it was about sitting down and having dinner. It was very civilised. It was very formal in some ways, um, and it reflected their culture. And I think one of the things that I really didn't want to do was quash that cultural thing, where each group has its own flavour. Um, so when we set up the rules for engagement with Girl Geek Dinners and shared the idea internationally, I only set three rules. Um, the events had to be free to attend, 
i.e. not for profit. Um, so if there was a cost, it was an individual cost and it wasn't someone collecting money at the end of the night and putting it in their own pocket. Um, men were invited to attend by the female attendees and each female has one invite. And to this day we try and keep those three things. I often get questioned about why we have men attending our events, but to be fair, without men being involved, they're there in the workplace, they're there as our support network. They're part of the culture of technology, so we have to include and embrace them, because fighting with each other and then fighting with everybody else that's already in the industry just makes no sense. So rather than working against the guys that want to support getting more into technology, we embrace them. And in 2009, we actually had our first male come forward from Australia asking how could he start a Girl Geek dinner in Australia. Now that was a fascinating one because he wanted to encourage more women into technology. But he didn't want to be the face of it. So he actually came to me saying, I'd like to, put, I'd like to do one. But when I do it, I want to be able to then put someone else in charge that is female that can take this on in the long run. But I will mentor and support them in every way I can. And to me, that was amazing. I didn't expect it. I didn't ask for it. Um, and it opened things up a bit. It made people realise that you don't have to be female to actually encourage more women into technology. The press picked up on Girl Geek Dinners quite late on. They picked up on us in about 2008, 2009 quite strongly. Um, I did quite a lot of work with them to try and break down some of the stereotypes around technology um, with varying degrees of success, I have to say. Um, the problem with the British press and in some ways the international press is they're after a story and they want the stats and the facts and the figures and the problem is the stats and the facts and the figures haven't changed that much over the years but yet the industry itself has and the way that the industry has interacted with women um, over the years has changed back in 2005 it was almost unheard of to see females in the IT departments if they were, they were known as unicorns, they were mythical creatures that people just thought didn't exist. By 2008, they were starting to get some exposure, there were events happening where women were speaking, and there were a number of high profile cases where women were being discriminated against in public as well. So there were two very big things going on around that time. And the press wanted to pick up on all the negatives, but they wouldn't talk about positive role models. They wouldn't talk about um, how to encourage women to, into the workplace and how to retain them and keep them in an environment where actually they feel comfortable and safe. Um, and that's changed since then. In the meantime, the Girlgate dinner events have gone from strength to strength. We started seeing other groups mimic our, um, our organisation, which was brilliant. Um, Girls Who Code started coming about. We started getting things like um, Girls in Tech and all sorts of other groups. And they started getting some traction as well, which meant that our events weren't the only ones out there. It meant that there was even bigger support networks out there for women in the IT sector. Um, and all, all of these started around the same kind of times. It was slightly bizarre and it, it almost came out as a result of some of the press attention. So we carried on. Uh, we supported those networks. We uh, encouraged them. Uh, some of the organisers of our events were organisers of their events. It, it was, it's been lovely. And since then, we've found that 
those support networks are absolutely necessary. <coughs> so, let's see, that's taken us around 2008-2009. If we go carry on across the next few years, 2010 through to 2013, we started seeing a lot of, a big explosion in the group numbers coming up. Um, the subject ranges got broader. We were in more countries than we'd ever been before. We also started getting interesting um, interactions with some of the government organisations um, and invitations to go and meet uh, members of parliament um, and help shape some of the national curriculums in some of the countries. So, Gurgit Dunas has quietly been helping with some of those changes. And it's been fascinating to see those really starting to kick in now. Um, and I'm sure they will continue to have an impact in the future. Uh, in 2013, I also um, was approached by the United Nations ITU, which is the technology arm of the United Nations, um, to speak twice, not once, but twice, um, in Geneva. Uh, about women and tech, um, about what we needed from our governments, uh, our ministers, to support and encourage more women into technology. And they were listening. The interesting thing with the with United Nations event, conference, is you speak, but you don't get questioned on what you say. Um, it is then up to the, the individual countries to get in touch and um, take on board what you've said and to back it. And a lot of the countries that Gurgit Dinners are in have been well supported by their governments. And I look forward to seeing more of that happening in the future through events, through grassroots activities, but also through more structured activities, um, things like the He For She campaign that's been running in the last 12 months from the United Nations has had a massive effect and has been supported at government level and has been picked up well by the press as well. So Women in Tech is now more accepted, it's more positive, it's not as aggressive in the workplace as an environment. Um, and people are starting to understand more about what keeps women actually wanting to remain in the technology industry and what drives us to go there in the first place. So that's Gogi Dunner's history in a nutshell. Where are we going to go in the future? No one can really tell you that, right? I mean, what I would love to see is more women choosing careers in technology, understanding that they need to have maths to be able to go on and study that subject um, through university, but I would also love to see the universities remove the grade requirement to have to have A-level maths to be able to go um, and study computer science and maybe consider a foundation course in maths to bring everyone up to the same level. Now, that could be done in any country, so A-level and equivalent in each country. Um, what else would I like? I would like the press to um, continue supporting the role model schemes and encouraging more women to consider tech as something that is important in their lives. Um, and I'm seeing more around this happening even with the... Um, with the fashion magazines, which is amazing, because I never thought the fashion magazines would actually start encouraging women to show an interest in technology. Even if it's only a first level set of interest, it's a starting point, and we need to encourage that. Um, where else would we like to see Girl Geek Dinners go? We'd love to see more things happening with our current members actually being able to go into schools and talking about what they do to encourage the next generation. 
There are interesting issues surrounding getting people into schools. Um, it is my challenge to every member of Gurgi Dinners to, um, to encourage young people to consider technology as a career choice. Because most of what we do is built on technology and we have an ageing population of technologists. And if we don't do something about that, we're going to lose that knowledge and innovation around technology is going to slow down. There's no statistical way of doing it any other, in, without people, right? Um, you can get computers to do things ultimately faster, but you're still going to need people to drive computers. So we need to get more young people interested in technology and we need to find fun and exciting ways to do that and not just um, expect people, other people to do that. You can't just expect the teachers to do it. You can't expect the parents to be the knowledge fonts for all forms of technology. Most parents don't understand technology. Their parents definitely don't in many cases and um, if we don't start helping those parents and those teachers and those young people to understand a little bit better what technology is all about, how to use it and how to consider working in that industry sector then we're going to struggle. So on a positive we're seeing all sorts of interesting schemes working or happening um, through governments etc. In the UK they've changed the ICT curriculum, uh, we'll have to see how that pans out, that should be an interesting uh, first step and uh, other countries like Norway are looking to the UK to see what's happening there. Um, what else? What else would you like to know about women in tech and girl geek dinners and me? On a personal level, um, Gurgi Diz has been a really interesting learning curve. I would class it as my first entrepreneurial adventure um, outside of university and it has been a roller coaster. It has taken me around the world to interesting countries to talk about all sorts of areas around women in technology and I found it quite inspiring meeting other people with that passion for technology. I still code, I'm still geeky with my gadgets, um, and now that I have a family of my own I'm starting to understand a little more about how technology can impact young people. So on a personal level that's, that's quite a learning curve. <laughs> Um, and it's really, really exciting. Every time I see something that is truly innovative, I get excited about it. It's very silly, very geeky. But I never want to lose that. Because, to me, that's the essence of, of me. Um, And at the end of the day, there's nothing wrong with being a geek, right? <laughs> there's, um, there's a lot of things that we can do with technology and I think we need to think about that. I've always used technology for good. I know that there are people out there that don't, that won't. Um, and I think it's important to protect our privacy online particularly when we're looking at young people. Um, and I think the debate around privacy and personal data is definitely something that is fascinating to me and is, is going to become more important over the next few years. Not just personally, but professionally as well. There's probably going to be a lot of changes in, in the way that data and information about ourselves is, is actually looked after and I'm fascinated to see where that pans out. Anyway, and on that note I will love you and leave you and let you get on with your 
celebrations. I'm sorry I can't be there in person. Unfortunately, I can't split myself across lots of different cities and countries at the same time. Uh, so this was my, my little solution to that problem. And obviously, I'm using Geeky Techie to tools to do it. So, um, without any further ado, enjoy your party, enjoy your event, or enjoy watching this online, whichever you do, or listening to it on the podcast. Um, thank you for listening to me, and if you have questions, feel free to email or just drop me a tweet. Um, I am Geeky Lamb on Twitter, or you can tweet at Girl Dinners, so it's at GGD Worldwide. Um, and I will get back to you. Thank you very much. Bye.